Chapters 101 through 125 of William Shakespeare. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information and to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Sam Stinson. Chapter 101 O truant muse, what shall be thy amends? For thy neglect of truth and beauty die. Both truth and beauty on my love depends. So dost thou too, and therein dignified. Make answer, muse, wilt thou not haply say, Truth needs no color with his color fixed, Beauty no pencil, beauty's truth to lay. But best is best, if never intermixed, Because he needs no praise, wilt thou be dumb? Excuse not silence so, for't lies in thee. To make him much outlive a gilded tomb, And to be praised of ages yet to be. Then do thy office, muse, I teach thee how, To make him seem long hence, as he shows now. End of chapter 101 Chapter 102 My love is strengthened, though more weak in seeming, I love not less, Though less the show appear, that love is merchandised, Whose rich esteeming, the owner's tongue doth publish everywhere. Our love was new, and then but in the spring, When I was wont to greet it with my lays, As Philomel in summer's front doth sing, And stops her pipe in growth of riper days. Not that the summer is less pleasant now Than when her mournful hymns did hush the night, but that wild music burthens every bow, And sweets grown common lose their dear delight. Therefore, like her, I sometime hold my tongue, Because I would not dull you with my song. End of chapter 102 Chapter 103 Alack, what poverty my muse brings forth, That having such a scope to show her pride, the argument all bear is of more worth Than when it hath my added praise beside. O oh, blame me not if I no more can write. Look in your glass, and there appears a face That overgoes my blunt invention quite, Dulling my lines, and doing me disgrace. Were it not sinful, then striving to mend, To mar the subject that before was well? For to no other pass my verses tend, than of your graces and your gifts to tell, And more, much more than in my verse can sit, Your own glass shows you when you look in it. End of chapter 103 Chapter 104 To me, fair friend, you never can be old, For as you were when first your eye I eyed, Such seems your beauty still, three winters cold, have from the forest shook three summers' pride. Three beauteous springs to yellow autumn turned, In process of the seasons have I seen. Three April perfumes in three hot Junes burned, Since first I saw you fresh, which yet are green. Ah, yet doth beauty like a dial hand, Steal from his figure, and no pace perceived. So your sweet hue, which methinks still doth stand, Hath motion, and mine eye may be deceived. For fear of which, hear this, thou age unbred, Ere you were born was beauty's summer dead. End of chapter 104 Chapter 105 Let not my love be called idolatry, Nor my beloved as an idol show, Since all alike my songs and praises be To one of one still such and ever so. Kind is my love to-day, to-morrow kind, Still constant in a wondrous excellence, Therefore my verse to constancy confined, One thing expressing, leaves out difference. Fair, kind, and true is all my argument, Fair, kind, and true varying to other words, And in this change is my invention spent, Three themes in one which wondrous scope affords. Fair, kind, and true, have often lived alone, Which three till now never kept seat in one. End of chapter 105
Chapter 106 When in the chronicle of wasted time I see descriptions of the fairest whites, and beauty making beautiful old rhyme in praise of ladies dead and lovely knights, then in the blazon of sweet beauty's best, of hand, of foot, of lip, of eye, of brow, I see their antique pen would have expressed even such a beauty as you master now. So all their praises are but prophecies of this our time, all you prefiguring, and for they looked but with divining eyes, they had not skill enough your worth to sing. For we which now behold these present days have eyes to wonder but lack tongues to praise. End of chapter 106 Chapter 107 Not mine own fears, nor the prophetic soul, of the wide world dreaming on things to come, can yet the lease of my true love control, suppose it as forfeit to a confined doom. The mortal moon hath her eclipse endured, and the sad augurs mock their own presage. Uncertainties now crown themselves assured, and peace proclaims olives of endless age. Now with the drops of this most balmy time, my love looks fresh, and death to me subscribes, since spite of him I'll live in this poor rhyme, while he insults or dull and speechless tribes. And thou in this shalt find thy monument, when tyrants' crests and tombs of brass are spent. End of chapter 107 Chapter 108 What's in the brain that ink may character, Which hath not figured to thee my true spirit? What's new to speak, what now to register, That may express my love or thy dear merit? Nothing, sweet boy, but yet like prayers divine I must each day say or the very same, Counting no old thing old, thou mine, I thine, Even as when first I hallowed thy fair name, so that eternal love, in love's fresh case, Weighs not the dust and injury of age, Nor gives to necessary wrinkles place, But makes antiquity for I his page. Finding the first conceit of love there bred, Where time in outward form would show it dead. End of chapter 108 Chapter 109 Oh, never say that I was false of heart, though absent seemed my flame to qualify, as easy might I from myself depart, as from my soul which in thy breast doth lie. That is my home of love, if I have ranged, like him that travels I return again, just to the time, not with the time exchanged, so that myself bring water for my stain. Never believe, though, in my nature reigned all frailties that besiege all kinds of blood that it could so preposterously be stained to leave for nothing all thy sum of good for nothing this wide universe i call save thou my rose and it thou art my all end of chapter one hundred and nine chapter one hundred and ten alas tis true i have gone here and there and made myself a motley to the view Gored mine own thoughts, sold cheap what is most dear, Made old offences of affections new. Most true it is, that I have looked on truth, Askance and strangely. But by all above, these blenches gave my heart another youth, And worse essays proved thee my best of love. Now all is done, save what shall have no end. Mine appetite I never more will grind, On newer proof, to try an older friend a god in love to whom I am confined. Then give me welcome, next my heaven the best, even to thy pure and most, most loving breast. End of chapter 110 Chapter 111 O oh, for my sake do you with fortune chide, the guilty goddess of my harmful deeds, that did not better for my life provide, than public means which public manners breeds. Thence comes it that my name receives a brand, and almost thence my nature is subdued to what it works in, like the dyer's hand. Pity me then, and wish I were renewed, whilst like a willing patient I will drink, potions of easel 
gainst my strong infection, no bitterness that I will bitter think, nor double penance to correct correction. Pity me, then, dear friend, and I assure ye, even that your pity is enough to cure me. End of chapter 111 Chapter 112 your love and pity doth the impression fill, Which vulgar scandal stamped upon my brow. For what care I who calls me well or ill, So you or green my bad, my good allow? You are my all, the world, and I must strive To know my shames and praises from your tongue. None else to me, nor I to none alive, That my steeled sense or changes right or wrong. In so profound abysm I throw all care of others' voices, That my adder's sense to critic and to flatterer stopped are. Mark how with my neglect I do dispense. You are so strongly in my purpose bred, That all the world besides methinks are dead. End of chapter 112 Chapter 113 Since I left you, mine eye is in my mind, and that which governs me to go about, Doth part his function, and is partly blind, Seems seeing, but effectually is out. For it no form delivers to the heart Of bird, of flower, or shape which it doth latch, Of his quick objects hath the mind no part, Nor his own vision holds what it doth catch. For if it see the rootst or gentlest sight, The most sweet favour or deformed creature, the mountain, or the sea, the day or night, the crow or dove, it shapes them to your feature, incapable of more, replete with you, my most true mind thus maketh mine untrue. End of chapter 113 Chapter 114 Or whether doth my mind, being crowned with you, Drink up the monarch's plague this flattery? Or whether shall I say mine eye saith true, And that your love taught it this alchemy, To make of monsters and things indigest, Such cherubins as your sweet self resemble, Creating every bad a perfect best, As fast as objects to his beams assemble? Oh, tis the first, tis flattery in my seeing, And my great mind most kingly drinks it up, Mine eye well knows what with his gust is green, And to his palate doth prepare the cup. If it be poisoned, tis the lesser sin, Then mine eyes loves it, and doth first begin. End of chapter 114 Chapter 115 Those lines that I before have writ do lie, Even those that said I could not love you dearer, Yet then my judgment knew no reason why My most full flame should afterwards burn clearer. But reckoning time, whose millioned accidents Creep in twixt vows, and change decrees of kings, Tan sacred beauty, blunt the sharpest intents, Divert strong minds to the course of altering things. Alas, why fearing of time's tyranny, Might I not then say, now I love you best? When I was certain or uncertainty, Crowning the present, doubting of the rest. Love is a babe, then might I not say so, To give full growth to that which still doth grow. End of chapter 115 Chapter 116 Let me not to the marriage of true minds Admit impediments. Love is not love which alters When it alteration finds, or bends with the remover to remove. Oh, no, it is an ever-fixed mark That looks on tempest and is never shaken. It is the star to every wandering bark Whose worth's unknown, although his height be taken. Love's not time's fool, Though rosy lips and cheeks within His bending sickle's compass come. Love alters not with his brief hours and weeks, but bears it out even to the edge of doom. If this be error, and upon me proved, I never writ, nor no man ever loved. End of chapter 116 Chapter 117 
accuse me thus that i have scant at all wherein i should your great deserts repay for god upon your dearest love to call whereto all bonds do tie me day by day that i have frequent been with unknown minds and given to time your own dear purchased right that i have hoisted sail to all the winds which should transport me farthest from your sight book both my wilfulness and errors down and on just proof surmise accumulate bring me within the level of your frown but shoot not at me in your wakened hate since my appeal says i did strive to prove the constancy and virtue of your love end of chapter one hundred and seventeen chapter one hundred and eighteen like as to make our appetite more keen with eager compounds we our palate urge as to prevent our maladies unseen we sicken to shun sickness when we purge even so being full of your ne'er cloying sweetness to bitter sauces did i frame my feeding and sick of welfare found a kind of meatness to be diseased ere that there was true needing thus policy in love to anticipate the ills that were not grew to faults assured and brought to medicine a healthful state which rank of goodness would by ill be cured but thence i learn and find the lesson true drugs poison him that so fell sick of you end of chapter one hundred and eighteen chapter one hundred and nineteen what portions have i drunk of siren tears distilled from limbex foul as hell within applying fears to hopes and hopes to fears still losing when i saw myself to win what wretched errors hath my heart committed whilst it hath thought itself so blessed never how have mine eyes out of their spheres been fitted in the distraction of this madding fever o oh, benefit of ill now i find true that better is by evil still made better and ruined love when it is built anew grows fairer than at first more strong far greater so i return rebuked to my content and gain by ills thrice more than i have spent end of chapter one hundred and nineteen chapter one hundred and twenty that you were once unkind befriends me now and for that sorrow which i then did feel needs must i under my transgression bow unless my nerves were brass or hammered steel for if you were by my unkindness shaken as i by yours you have passed a hell of time and i a tyrant have no leisure taken to weigh how once i suffered in your crime oh that our night of woe might have remembered my deepest sense how hard true sorrow hits as soon to you as you to me then tendered the humble salve which wounded bosoms fits but that your trespass now becomes a fee mine ransoms yours and yours must ransom me end of chapter one hundred and twenty chapter one hundred and twenty one tis better to be vile than vile esteemed when not to be receives reproach of being and the just pleasure lost which is so deemed not by our feeling but by others seeing for why should others false adulterate eyes give salutation to my sportive blood or on my frailties why are frailer spies which in their wills count bad what i think good no i am that i am and they that level at my abuses reckon up their own i may be straight though they themselves be bevel by their rank thoughts my deeds must not be shown unless this general evil they maintain all men are bad and in their badness reign end of chapter one hundred and twenty one chapter one hundred and twenty two thy gift thy tables are within my brain full charactered with lasting memory which shall above that idle rank remain beyond all date even to eternity or at the least so long as brain and heart have faculty by nature to subsist till each to raised oblivion yield his part of thee 
thy record never can be missed. That poor retention could not so much hold, nor need I tallies thy dear love to score. Therefore to give them from me was I bold, to trust those tables that receive thee more. To keep an adjunct to remember thee were to import forgetfulness in me. End of chapter 122 Chapter 123 No, time, thou shalt not boast that I do change. Thy pyramids built up with newer might to me are nothing novel, nothing strange. They are but dressings of a former sight. Our dates are brief, and therefore we admire what thou dost foist upon us that is old and rather make them born to our desire than think that we before have heard them told thy registers and thee i both defy not wondering at the present nor the past for thy records and what we see doth lie made more or less by thy continual haste this i do vow and this shall ever be i will be true despite thy scythe and thee End of chapter one hundred and twenty three Chapter 124 If my dear love were but the child of state, it might for fortune's bastard be unfathered, as subject to time's love or to time's hate, weeds among weeds, or flowers with flowers gathered. No, it was builded far from accident. It suffers not in smiling pomp, nor falls under the blow of thrall discontent, where to inviting time our fashion calls it fears not policy that heretic which works on leases of short numbered hours but all alone stands hugely politic that it nor grows with heat nor drowns with showers to this i witness call the fools of time which die for goodness who have lived for crime end of chapter one hundred and twenty four chapter one hundred and twenty five were it aught to me I bore the canopy, with my extern the outward honouring, or laid great bases for eternity, which proves more short than waste or ruining? Have I not seen dwellers on form and favour lose all, and more by paying too much rent for compound sweet, foregoing simple savour, pitiful thrivers in their gazing spent? No, let me be obsequious in thy heart, and take thou my oblation, poor but free, which is not mixed with seconds, knows no art, but mutual render only me for thee. Hence, thou suborned informer, a true soul, when most impeached, stands least in thy control. End of chapter 125